uh, this is an important topic. A measles, also known as rubeola, is one of the most contagious infectious disease with at least 90% secondary infectious infection rate in susceptible domestic contacts. So this is the measles. You might have seen the cases of measles. It's very common in a developing countries rather than developed countries. Okay. So it can affect people of all ages despite being considered primarily a childhood illness. So the cause of the measles, the the virus that causes measles is a, a morbili virus. It's an RNA virus. Okay. Uh, the family that belongs is a uh, paramyxoviridae. Okay. Humans are the natural host of the virus. No animal reservoirs are known to exist. This highly contagious virus is uh, spread by coughing, sneezing via close personal contact or a direct contact with the secretions. So sometimes even it can spread through the conjunctival secretions okay so it can spread to conjunctival secretions also so but the most common is aerosols remember our measles is marked by it it runs in the three, three stages uh, four stages you can call it like uh, incubation period it has an incubation period of 7 to 14 days and um, prodermal stage where you see fever cough coryza conjunctivitis okay and a pathognomic ananthem what is an ananthem ananthem is nothing but a rash that is seen on the mucosa is known as ananthem if the rash is seen on the skin it's known as exanthem okay so this is capillary spots capillary spots are very important for your discussion and very important for your examination okay uh, followed by an erythematous maculopapular rash on the third to seventh day of infection confirms a lying long immunity. So if you get this infection, if the patient gets this infection of measles, he will get the lifelong immunity. Very important points you should remember. I will at the end of this video I will give you a flow chart okay to help you memorize this very well. When does the rash starts, when does the capillary spots appear? These are very important points. The risk factors for the measles virus infection include the following children with immunodeficiency due to HIV or AIDS or leukemia, alkylating agents or corticosteroid therapy regardless of the immunization status. If the patient is immunocompromised and he gets a measles, most of the patient they don't develop rash. Remember, you cannot see the rash in that patient. Okay? A travel to areas where measles is endemic or a contact with the travelers to endemic areas. Infants who lose passive antibody before the age of routine immunization. Uh, risk factors for a severe measles and its complication include the following. Complications of this disease is very important and you should know and I will tell you at the end of this video. Uh, they are malnutrition, underlying immunodeficiency, pregnancy and vitamin A deficiency. Because this vitamin A deficiency is associated with this disease, that's why we give vitamin A in a patients with the measles. Okay. Uh, the incubation period is very important. It lies from 7 to 14 days. Okay. Uh, average being 10 to 12 days. Remember, now the point starts. The patients are in fact contagious from 1 to 2 days before the onset of symptoms. Okay. For example, if he gets a, he, uh, if a mother brings a child, uh, on a day first with a fever, there's a prodromal first sign, then it means he was contagious from a day two days before only. Okay, so remember, but it varies. Now I will tell you look at here. Healthy children are also contagious during the period from three to four days before the appearance of rash to four days after the onset of rash. So you can say from the onset of symptoms, for example, if he gets infection, if he gets a symptom fever from a day first, means he was contagious two days back. Okay. And you can continue that he is contagious. He can be contagious up to the fourth day of the rash. Okay. How long does this rash uh, last? It can last up to seven days okay and which is the longest symptom that is going to last is the cough okay cough is going to last for 14 days or 10 days 10 to 14 days okay on the other hand the immunocompromised individuals can be contagious during the duration of illness there are three c's you know the cough and the coryza and the 
conjunctivitis. What is the first sign? The first sign is a high fever, more than 104, okay, and typically lasts 4 to 7 days, remember. Um, this prodrome phase is marked by malaise, fever, anorexia, and classical triad is conjunctivitis, cough, and coryza. The other symptoms you can see is a photophobia, periorbital edema, and myalgia. Okay, you can also see as a complication as a punctate keratitis. That's very important complication of uh, measles. And uh, uh, it has been the cause of blindness in a developing countries. This measles as a cause, okay. The ananthem, as I say, if there is a rash inside the mucosal membrane, then it is known as ananthem exanthem. If there is a rash is on the skin, it is known as exanthem, okay. Uh, it appears on the two to four days after onset of the prodrome and lasts for three to five days. Just remember, if he gets the infection, if he gets the symptom fever on a day first, okay, it will take uh, two days for him to develop the uh, capillic spots, okay, and uh, once he get the capillic spots on the second day, it will last for five days and it will disappear. How does it look? That's very important. Where do you have to look? That's very important. Small spots, reddish area with blue to white dot in it. These are capillic spots are nothing but ulcerated lesions with a necrosis, neovascularization, okay, can be seen inside the cheek during the early stage, okay. So, these capillic spots are seen near the duct of stensons, remember. Uh, the exanthem, usually there's nothing but a rash, is usually appears one to two days after the appearance of capillic spots, okay. Capillic spots appear one to two days after the prodrome. Whereas rash appears one to two days after the capillary spots. Mild pruritus may be associated. On average, the rash develops about 14 days after exposure, uh, starting on the face, upper neck, and spreading to the extremities. If you want exact location, it can start from the preauricular region. Okay, uh, it starts from there and spreads cordially from the face and uh, neck and the torso and the extremities. Okay. Capillary spots are generally seen on the first and first, uh, th these you know. Although this is a pathognomic ananthem of the measles, but its absence does not exclude the diagnosis. If you see the capillary spots, you are done. You are sure about the diagnosis. Okay, but if it's absence and you don't, yeah, it doesn't mean that uh, you rule out um, can rule out easily measles. Where it's located? It's located near the stensus duct. Okay, on the buccal mucosa opposite to maxillary second molar. Remember this. Okay, regarding the exanthem, there's a rash, is a blanching at the matus macule, and the papule begins on the face at the hairline on the sides of the neck behind the ears. Within 48 hours, they collapse to into patches and plagues that spreads cephalocordially to the trunks and the extremities. Okay. Uh, legion's density is greatest above the shoulders. Whereas macular lesions may collapse, the eruption may also be petechial or acumatic in nature. Remember, this is in a black measles. There you can see the rash or purpura and a bleeding in that, and that is very severe. That's known as a hemorrhagic. Okay, hemorrhagic measles you can call it as. Uh, that's known as a black measles. That's very dangerous, and you need to be very cautious when monitoring these patients. Our uh, patients appear most ill during the first or a second day of the rash because of the high fever. Exanthem lasts for 5 to 7 days. That is a rash that lasts for seven to uh, 5 to 7 days, fading into coppery brown hyperpigmented patches which then disquamate. So usually they give and they get the new skin. The commonest complication of the otitis, uh, of the measles is otitis media, remember. Okay, and that can lead to mastoiditis. And the other things, interstitial pneumonitis, pneumonitis, bronchopneumonia. And what is the cause of a death? Usually the patients with the measles, they do very well, okay? If there is any cause of the most common cause of death in these patients would be uh, measles, remember, okay? These are the list of causes you can remember. Sinusitis, somatitis, subclinical hepatitis. The other thing, in fact, the measles remains the most common cause of blindness in many developing countries. The rare complications include hemorrhagic measles, which I discussed just now. 
uh, purpura fulminans, hepatitis, disseminated intravascular coagulation, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. This is seen on the long terms. There is a sudden change in the behavior of the patient of the baby. Okay, you can suspect this uh, SSPE. Okay, and this is very dangerous complication. The other complications you can read thrombocytopenia, appendicitis. Appendicitis is because when you when this organism, this these organisms, measles organisms, virus enters into the lymphatic system and they go and they multiply in the lymphatics and they spread to the whole part of the body. That's why they go near the appendicitis and cause appendicitis. What are the lab investigations? There is no specific lab investigation. Clinically, you need to diagnose this disease and start the treatment. Lymphopenia, you can see absolute neutropenia, you can see IgM is raised initially and IgG in later stages. Okay. The other thing, what you need to remember, you need to differentiate this disease from a Kawasaki disease. Okay. The strawberry tongues, okay. Then erythematous lesions on the palms and the soles, very important. Treatment is supportive and vitamin A. Okay, guys, thank you.